Hi, I'm Ron Clark. Today, I'm going to tell you about my newest tool. It's brand new. It's called the Protector. In mid-January, while I was making a whole slew of gate makers, um, a friend wrote to me and asked if I could make a tool, or if I ever had made a tool, uh, for protection. Um, and I hadn't. So I said, no, I haven't, but I know just the thing, how to make it. Um, so, with the, the ideas that came to me I immediately, and ended up being the actual uh, protector itself, um, we started planning. I started ordering uh, the crystals that I needed and uh, all the supplies I would need. And by the uh, end of January, I was ready to, I had finished all my gate makers, I had all the supplies, I was ready to start work. So I started work on the protector on February 2nd. I worked straight through for 20 days and finished on the 22nd of February. I shipped it out to them on the 1st of March and they received it on the 11th of March, uh, just a few days ago. So this is a brand new tool. Um, I should explain um, my philosophy for protection or shielding is number one you cannot protect against things that are karmically driven, things that you actually need to confront, etc. Those is n no protection. You can design things that will alert you to the presence of karmic forces like that, but you can't protect from them. Um, so, what you do if someone is sending negative energy at you, or you are in situations just filled with negative energy and are easily influenced by them, you can protect. Um, you can do all kinds of different shielding. There's shields that repel, there's shields that reflect, um, there's shields that divert, um, etc. Um, but this kind of shielding that I prefer, that I find works all the time for everything is a shield where you basically just disappear. You can't be found. Um, you know, something comes at you, goes right through you, and continues on into infinity. So, uh, any energy is sent at you is not reflected. It's, it doesn't perpetuate itself. Uh, because it doesn't meet anything, it goes right through, okay? So, what I designed was a tool that will provide that sort of protection. It shrouds the individual in, um, in, it shrouds them in such a way that they disappear, that nothing can find them. They're still there, but nothing negative energy cannot reach them. They are nowhere to be found, basically. So, the way that I achieved that was, uh, I knew that I had to start with a lot of grounding to this tool. This tool would need to be thoroughly, heavily grounded. So, my choice for that is lead. So I found some uh, lead fishing weights that were placed in the bottom. And then I added turquoise, some raw uh, Arizona turquoise, um, to soften the harshness of the lead grounding. Lead grounding is very, st you know, uh, you're grounded. Um, very abrupt, very harsh. So the turquoise softened that. And then there was an obsidian sphere. And this is the black hole, basically, uh, in which, to which all the energy, all negative energies, uh, sink. They just disappear into the black hole. Um, and then three um, uh, 
clear crystal quartz spheres, small ones, to rest on top of the obsidian sphere. Um, this gave it the ability to provide this protection uh, physically, astrally, and mentally. One sphere for each of the three worlds. Then at the top, final uh, crystal in the, in the whole mechanism here, um, was a nice uh, four-inch uh, double-terminated clear quartz crystal from Brazil. A uh, beautiful wand. It was, it is a really beautiful crystal. So that's what makes all well, wiring all of this together, connecting it all energetically, is copper, silver, and gold wire. Okay. So that's all the ingredients of the uh, protector, you know, aside from my cardboard construction to support the whole thing. So this picture is of the, in, the protector shielded, uh, sh um, sh shrouded, shall we say, in black silk. Then this is a picture of it unshrouded. This is what the protector looks like. It's uh, pyramidal in shape, has five levels, uh, eight, inch, eight inch diameter at the base, 12 sides, uh, and then it incre decreases by one inch as it goes up. Um, it's approximately 10 inch, 10 and a half inches tall with the crystal in the top. Otherwise, it's seven and a half inches tall. Um, so, and it's around the base, you see there are four other crystals. These come with the protector to um, enable it to, um, well, normally the protector radiates its protection within uh, a space, a house, um, and protects everything in the house. Um, it can be trained, essentially, to follow a person when they leave the house, the person that the protector is for. Um, the protection will follow them when they leave the house, so they remain protected throughout the day. Um, the four crystals are objects that can um, extend that protection. Um, it first, when you leave the house under the protector's protection, it follows you for a while, then dissipates. So the crystals uh, guarantee that the the protection follows with you. It can also um, the crystals can be used to extend protection to somebody else, to designate a crystal for somebody else, uh, impress that person on that crystal and thus, you know, extend the protector's protection to that person or animal. Um, so, this is what the uh, um, uh, protector looks like. Now, here's a picture of the large crystal uh, that is on the top of the protector. And here's an overhead of the radiator and how it looks with the uh, gold decoration. Okay, now I'm going to talk about how I constructed this tool and explain the whole process to you. The 20 days of labor. Um, okay, so what I started with was a, you know, remember, I work in cardboard. Cardboard, card, and paper, basically are the materials that I use. So I constructed um, the first of the one and a half inch tall, eight inch diameter layers, 12 sides, um, with a cutout in the center of it. And I put in eight two ounce um, lead weights. They're triangular in shape. And I got a glue gun, so uh, first experience of glue gun, I use a glue gun to secure the lead weights because these things can't be moving around. It's got to ship all the way to France, so it can't be moving around inside. Um, then I started the wiring. Now each of the lead weights had a little hook at the end 
these are fishing weights. Um, and so I connected wire, one copper wire, one silver wire, and one gold wire to each of the weights. So there's a total of 24 wires involved in this. And these wires are uh, about three or four feet long. Uh, had a lot of extra wire so that I was sure to have enough for the whole wiring process. So I connected them and to that little hook at the fat end of the weight and then drew them down to the center and glued them down. So they're all coming out of the center now, all 24 wires. Then what I did is I inserted all the turquoise pieces between the lead weights. Um, they aren't wired in, they weren't need needed to be wired in because they weren't really part of the energetic flow. They were there to soften the lead and uh, placed around the lead. They, they did that and again I used my little glue gun to secure all the, uh, the turquoise pieces in there. Then I put the obsidian sphere in the exact center of the lead weights and the wire. So all the wires are coming up around the obsidian sphere now and use the glue gun to secure the obsidian sphere um, and balance it on the uh, turquoise bits. So then what I did is I drew all the wires up and around the obsidian sphere. Now I wanted these wires to, well, uh, after the obsidian sphere comes the three smaller quartz spheres. So I want to cover one quartz sphere in copper wires, all the copper wires. One is covered in all the silver wires and the other in all the gold wires. So I needed to separate uh, these wires into three clumps, basically, copper, silver, and gold. So I drew it all up, separated all the wires, use a little bit of uh, glue gun and then once I did that and there was a lot of cursing um, <clears throat> I isolated the three um, ah yes <laughs> then um, I had to build the form up so that I could reach the top of the obsidian sphere so it took two more one and a half inch layers to reach the top of the obsidian sphere and then I had a place to place the um, clear quartz spheres. So after that I then wrapped the wires, all the copper wires around one obsidian, uh, one clear quartz sphere, all the silver around another clear quartz sphere and all the gold around the last of the clear quartz spheres. Again, lots of cursing. Um, okay, then what I had to do was build the form up to the top <coughs> um, of the spheres, the little uh, quartz spheres. That took another segment, another one and a half inch uh, segment. So then I'm ready to attach the holder for the uh, large quartz on top. And this was a, a copper tube, a piece of copper tubing that I had to shape so it would, the crystal would fit into it because a crystal is not round. You know, it's uh, more of an oval in the end. Um, so, shaped it. And then I wrapped all the wires from the, the, the three spheres all 24 wires were wrapped around that copper socket so that all of the energies were, you know, connected to the copper socket and thus the quartz, sphere, the quartz crystal that fits into the socket when it's plugged in. So I got all that wrapped up and then I built the final little form that would cover all of this junk <laughs> and present a nice opening for the quartz crystal to fit into. And then, of course, I painted the whole thing in black and decorated it in gold and then gave it, you know, a couple quarts of varnish. Yeah, 20, 20 days of work.
It's, uh, here's a diagram of the structure of uh, the protector. See, it has the, the five levels. Each is an inch and a half. Uh, the uh, lead and the turquoise in the bottom. The, the uh, quartz, I mean the obsidian sphere. And then the three clear quartz spheres on top of that and the copper socket on top of that and then the crystal that fits into the socket. So that's how it was all made and here again we go back to the picture of it completed. Um, I had the pleasure of living with the protector and you know I for about a week after I completed it and before I shipped it um, I needed to uh, make sure that it worked as intended and as designed. And it does. It very definitely does. Um, my house uh, was the calmest it's been in years. It was so pleasant. It was sort of a cottony safety. You know, there was nothing uh, coming in at all. It was perfect. Um, I discovered when leaving the house um, that it would follow me for a short while at first, just a few feet or a few yards. Um, then eventually it followed me for um, about 15 minutes uh, while I was outside and was very effective. <laughs> So, um, it, it filled my entire apartment um, with such a peaceful, calm feeling. There was just nothing uh, incoming at all. Um, nothing that I didn't want incoming, let's put it that way. Okay. Um, so, uh, the recipients have received... Um, the protector and it is working exactly um, as it should for them as well uh, they, they love their protector um, so a very successful tool um, yeah that's the protector bye bye